Joanne DeFay just earned hers over Carissa Moore, a five-time world champ, finishing runner-up uh, once again this season. She's had now a few of those from the opener at Pipeline, uh, was runner-up to Moana Jones-Wong, uh, also another runner-up performance at Bells Beach to Tyler Wright, and now runner-up here. Absolutely, and he's a bit further, or it's uh, Phil Toledo up, the, up and riding up the point. One of the fastest surfers on the planet getting started. Backside blast complete for Toledo. That section's going to stretch out dramatically. So, bit of downtime, but he'll hang in there. Toledo now launching an uncharacteristic slip up on the backside rotation. Still world number one. We'll see what happened here. Nice carve out of the top. Comes around the section, just gets caught a little bit here. Does very well to get around at the bottom of the wave. And then try went for the air, but the board turning. Let's hope that he's picked the, the, the right one to have a great performance this afternoon. Getting things started. The man from Western Australia, Jack Robinson. Big snap to slide. So both surfers starting with the fall in the final. And Toledo will now have priority. Uh, it felt like he just let it slip away with wave selection. And Ethan obviously earned that win. But he climbed back up the ladder with a final in Portugal to the win at Bells. As we see the backhand snap complete from Jack Robinson. He'll hang on to the finishing move under Felipe's priority. Just trying to get a quick wave under priority. Put the pressure on Felipe. Has done on the inside. I like the tail slide here. Let's it, lets it slide for a while and then pulls it back into control. And One of the hardest things to do in the game. Go all the way and beat the best surfers in the world to be the champion of the event in motion. We're watching the backhand of the Australian Jack Robinson. Flowing through some backhand arc, stomps on that one to slow down the momentum and force the slide. And a good way to change up the variety. Absolute drainers, we'll catch up with Wands in a moment because it looks like it's time for some shredding. Jack Robinson pulls in for a moment, didn't quite pull into the tube there and he has to step off. Love that style with that backhand tube stance. Back to turns for Felipe. Plenty open face to work with. Crushes it there, two big hooks. There's the third and quickly reacting to shut it down. Re recovering on his heels, he will stay on his feet. And I love when he starts getting animated. Perfect out of the lip. Another nice turn, slashing putting some variety into these backhand turns. A little late on that one, and I thought he might have come down incomplete. Jack with priority, trying to better a 5-3-3, and Toledo trying to look for a four-point ride. And now setting things up, swinging back into the pocket. Toledo going straight up vertically. Hard off the bottom, nice snap to slide. He controls it, and the section's going to shut it down, only needing a four. I'm expecting a lead change. As we see, got into this wave really early, which he had to kind of slow it down again to get in the pocket, but that was a great turn. Took his time here. I like that he didn't rush it and didn't try and climb the foam there. He just was happy. Okay, I got good turn, two good turns done. Got into this wave really early. Slash back to get himself in the pocket. This turn was awesome out of the lip. And then this one here just got himself up in the lip, tail loose, and was looking for the for the float, but just decided, no, nah, I've done enough, that'll do. Great read, and when any time you see a framed up turn like that, straight up vertical, you know how dynamic that is? It felt good for Toledo. Came out of that with a lot more speed as well. Yeah, and look at this one, tail above the lip, in full control, coming down, goes, oh, I'm gonna go back up there again, but no, nah, I'm too late. And Jack still repositioning. He might be able to get into this one. We're already into the countdown. Three seconds on the clock. He's up to his feet. Needs a 6.67. Hammers the first section. Blasts it again under the hood. Looking for a finish. He's got to stay on his feet. And Jack Robinson shuts it down on the buzzer. Chasing a 6.67. Did this in the semifinal. Did he just do it again, Luke? Jack coming off the bottom, vertical slash out of the top, comes around, bashes it one more time. That section went a little bit flat. It was a little hollow, or I'd probably say he got it, but uh, 
I'm not too sure. It's really hard to say. Some really good surfing out of the lip. Maybe needed a little bit more fin in that last turn, maybe. But uh, Jack has the chance right at the end again to get the score. Has he done it? Well, one thing we know is he doesn't get rattled when his back's against the wall. He doesn't mind taking off here in the horn sound. He's clean, he's reliable with his backside snaps, both in the most critical part of the wave. And it's, he's not looking for the best number of the heat, Luke. Felipe has a 783, he needs a lot less than that at a 667. I feel like the judges are gonna have a long look at this. I, I feel like it's close. So then feeling like that last wave had a bit Whoa. more wall. First reaction from the panel and second are uh, saying he's going to turn it. the they're heat. It. One judge says it's under. It's coming down to one more score for the average. For the second time on finals day, Jack Robinson waits and he does it again. Robinson at the buzzer. A 7.0 wow. has gone back to back with his victories from Margaret River and now the champion of the Quicksilver Pro G Land. <laughs> Felipe Toledo to Crank congratulate Jack Robinson on the effort. And for the first time, Robinson's letting it all seek in after 25 years. Luke Egan, proud to pass the Tiger to Jack Robinson.